Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And first of all, for those of you who want to read our article on the Dublin story, our intervention at the work site for the City of Dublin employees. And by the way, Dublin is a suburb of Columbus. We weren't working in Ireland when we did this intervention. But anyway, it's posted on our website at wellnessfarm.com. So you can go there right on the front page and read this article. I'm very, very proud of our work um, with Dublin and we love having the City of Dublin as a client. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first of all, Wednesday, uh, February 13th, that's tomorrow night actually, uh, Conversations with Dr. Pam, that's me, and I'll be talking about herpes for the first 15 minutes, prevention and treatment, and uh, then the rest of the time you can ask me questions about anything. Well, maybe not the Middle East and things in Mali right now, but how about health-related questions? We'll limit it to that. And then on Monday, February 18th, Conversations with Chef Dell. He's gonna talk about amazing beans, and Dell's been doing some incredible stuff with beans, making them into cream sauces and I just love his work these days. Of course, I'm a foodie, so love being around the Wellness Farm Kitchen. And of course, if you participate in the conference calls with Chef Dell, you get copies of the recipes and all that good stuff. So I have two topics I'm gonna to talk about today. And first one's not surprising. A recent study shows that men who consume fried foods have an increased risk of prostate cancer, about 37% increased risk. And the relationship is even stronger for more aggressive forms of the disease. Now, again, not surprised here. What is surprising is that the relationship was found for men who eat fried food more than once a week. Now, I know we all know people who eat some version of the standard American diet. They eat fried foods a whole lot more often than just once a week. And the food choices were not limited. The fried foods weren't just animal foods and fish. They also included french fries and donuts, even more commonly consumed. The researchers looked at data for over 1,500 men with prostate cancer, compared them to healthy controls. They controlled for factors like age, race, body mass index, family history, and PSA screening history. And the lead researcher suggested that the reason for the increased risk might be the toxic byproducts of heating oil to high temperatures. And that possibly could be it, but the link may also just be due to the increased fat consumption that comes along with eating fried foods. Many studies have shown that eating fried foods increases your risk of uh, getting cancer, many forms of cancer, and also your risk of contracting a very aggressive form of cancer that's less responsive to treatment. Um, while we're on the subject of prostate cancer, I cannot talk about this without reminding all the men that are listening that giving up dairy products is your number one goal because the link between dairy products and prostate cancer is stronger than the link between smoking and lung cancer. So you want to get that stuff out of the diet. But you also just want to pay attention to the dietary pattern. I don't think I can say this often enough that um, if you get rid of the fried foods but you still consume dairy or you get rid of the dairy and you're still consuming the fried foods, your risk is going to be high of developing something including cancer. So adopt a whole foods, plant-based diet, the continuing mantra around here. Okay, the second article I want to publish, or I want to talk about uh, was in the Annals of Internal Medicine. And boy, does this tell it all about why our healthcare system in this country has developed into the bloated financial disaster that it has become. And uh, the study looked at the attitudes of both patients and cardiologists about the use of stents for treating coronary artery disease. Now, I've written about this before. You can read articles in the HealthBrace Online Library. There's information in my books about it. But stents have been proven to be useless in most instances. There are applications for them, but unfortunately not many. Um, unfortunately, I say because cardiologists in hospitals live off of bypass surgery and angioplasty. But uh, just to give you an idea, statin drugs reduce the risk of heart attack by less than 2%, and angioplasty has been, uh, the use of stents has been shown to be less effective than that. I mean, that's, that really says something. But we do 600,000 uh, angioplasties every year in the United States, and most of them involve the use of stents. Now, the participants in the study included both patients and then interventional and referring cardiologists. 75% of the patients believed that they were probably going to have a heart attack in the next, um, within the next five years, and 88% thought that this procedure was going to help them. Now, the evidence shows otherwise, but we can forgive the patients. They aren't expected to know better. But what was really interesting is the doctors should know better. But here's what they said. When asked, 63% of the cardiologists believed that the benefits of angioplasty and stenting were limited to just symptom relief. After being presented with potential scenarios during, in which the, um, the, the stents would be absolutely useless, 43% of the cardiologists said they would put those stents in anyway. 
So in other words, most cardiologists know that the best that can be expected is symptom relief. And close to half, when confronted with evidence showing that they were useless, said, well, we'd use them anyway. I think that's kind of remarkable, um, even though there's no benefit. Well, actually, there is a benefit. Like I said before, cardiologists and hospitals make a lot of money on procedures like this. Now, I have been trying really hard to be kind to my colleagues and make nicer comments. Um, some of you might not believe that, but I really do work hard not to say exactly what I think. I've been saying things like doctors are victims of their training, and sometimes they don't work in environments where they're able to do the right thing, and I know that some of that is true. But when you see things like this, it becomes harder and harder to defend the behavior. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Um, John McDougall, one of my heroes and great mentor of mine, wrote an article a couple of years ago, and if you subscribe to his new newsletter, you probably saw it, Cardiologists are Criminals. And I read that and I just cringed because I thought, oh my gosh, do we really need to say that? Well, it, during a conference call, um, Dr. McDougall said, well, what do we call individuals who take people's money and hurt them. We call them criminals. And I thought, well, yeah, that's true. And um, some of the behavior of cardiologists who know that something's useless and do it anyway, well, I guess that comes under the category of taking money from people and hurting them. So I, I suppose I'm understanding Dr. McDougall's direct statements um, and a little bit of where he comes from more every day. So uh, anyway, um, if you're in a situation where somebody's telling you or a family member that you need to get stents, you probably ought to uh, at least look into it before you agree to this procedure, which is deemed useless in most instances. So that's all for now. I will be back to you on Thursday with the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And as always, pass this on to anybody who you think would benefit from watching it.